welcome. We're very excited today to have Dr. Walter Su with us, uh, sharing about his experiences with APHA. Uh, Dr. Su is a former APHA president. Dr. Su, thank you so much for speaking to us. Can you share a little bit of your history uh, with public health? Well, with public health, it's been a really long time. I, uh, I, I guess I, I started working in a public health clinic in West Philadelphia, taking care of a lot of poor people. I think it's around 1991. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, every day I would take care of people who um, would say to me that they could not put food on their table and also pay for a doctor's visit and medicine. And they were grateful for a public health clinic. And uh, it was that experience, I think, that got me interested in a whole, whole area of public health because um, you know, it just seemed like there was something wrong with the healthcare system mm -hmm. where some people just could not afford to uh, see a doctor or, get, or pay for their medicines. And from that, I, I got interested in public health, mm -hmm. worked in the public health clinic for like nine years, then uh, decided to get a master's of public health. And I uh, ended up working back in Philadelphia to uh, uh, work the public health department this time in a more administrative role, mm -hmm. trying to improve health services for uh, people in our city health centers. And after that, I, uh, I was working uh, there and uh, I helped a friend of mine said, you know, can we start a new health department in the suburbs of Philadelphia? And I said, well, are there any poor people there? And they said, uh, yeah, there are. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. He said, you know, I figured this would happen once in your life. Mm -hmm. Start a new health department from scratch. And so I, I did that for nine years, working in the Montgomery County Health Department in Pennsylvania. And then at that time, a position opened up for uh, health commissioner of Philadelphia. And because of my previous work in Philadelphia, working in the clinics, uh, they hired me as the next health commissioner back in uh, 2000. And uh, after that, I uh, got, you know, was more active with APHA, and later on, I, I, I became president of the APHA. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure, but you know, it's a very rich history too. Uh, you know, you work in public health, so can, can you share about it as a health commissioner? Uh, what are some of the, you know, uh, key memories, or you know, those memories that you cherish from working as a as a health commissioner in Philadelphia? Yeah, well, you know, uh, it's very, uh, the health department is large, it's in like over a thousand employees, and it, it, it ranged everywhere from animal control to running a nursing home to the medical examiner's office, as well as all the basic functions of environmental health protection, running clinical services in our health centers, and trying to do a chronic disease control program. So. It's, uh, there are many hats you have to wear as the health commissioner. The major one, I think, is to try to protect your staff from all the ravages of the politics that surround us and making sure that they can uh, do their job and, and make sure that we have an, enough funding for them. Uh, during the time I was commissioner, there was a debate about whether uh, we should have smoke-free restaurants. It's hard to believe when we think about it now mm -hmm. because it's such a no-brainer. Of course, we should have smoke-free restaurants. But at the time, it was considered controversial, and the restaurant association were very opposed to smoke-free restaurants. But eventually, uh, with the help of a lot of public health advocates, we, we ended up prevailing. Great, great. Um, so in your role as the APHA uh, president, um, what are some of the, you know, those key moments that you remember from the presidency? I was APHA president at the time of uh, Hurricane Katrina hitting New Orleans, which mm -hmm. is actually where we were going, we're going to have our uh, national meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, amazingly, uh, we uh, had the, the wisdom, perhaps APHA, to have an insurance policy in case there was some natural disaster that happened. And um, as everyone knows, it, it, New Orleans was not ready for APHA because of what happened there. So uh, quickly, uh, they reconfigured re, uh, APHA's annual meeting to come to Philadelphia. So ironically, 
uh, the city that I uh, was had served as health commissioner, I now had the opportunity to be the APHA president in my home city. And that certainly was uh, a, a great opportunity for me to uh, show off Philadelphia to, of course, our, our great APHA. Yeah, I remember that year. <laughs> yeah, so um, there's a new generation of public health uh, professionals uh, in, a, in a new set of issues or challenges. Um, so what do you, what do you see uh, the future of public health? Uh, where, where do you see public health professionals focusing their work in this, you know, in this new era? I think it, we have a lot of challenges, as you point out. Uh, and one of the most important ones is to elevate and raise the importance of public health in our society. A lot of people talk about how do we control healthcare costs and the high cost of healthcare and so on. And what people have to realize is that the best way to reduce healthcare costs is to prevent illnesses and disability in the first place. And if all of us think about growing up in safe and supportive environments where people or kids are nurtured and allowed to um, be educated and to express themselves freely, uh, we would have a much stronger and better society. And uh, these are all the domains of what we learn here at APHA and in public health. Uh, that's where we need to be going as a society. We need to convince our elected leaders that that's where we need to go because they're grappling with enormous costs of uh, health care, of, of social burdens in our society. And the reality is that an early investment or early childhood interventions and uh, making sure that people grow up in safe and supportive environments would go a long way to uh, having a more viable and affordable uh, country. Great, thank you for sharing. So now we are at APHA 2023. So what are your hopes um, for this meeting? What are you hoping to take home with you? Well, uh, I always get energized from coming to the APHA meeting, uh, not just only to re-network with lots of people that I've met over my lifetime in public health, uh, but I, you know, there are new things that are going on in public health. I mean. Five years ago, we never, we didn't have a COVID pandemic. Uh, we didn't talk about things like artificial intelligence. We didn't talk about uh, fracking, environmental justice, and things like that. That are new things that are are, are in our, our env environment today. So I think uh, you know, APHA is is an opportunity to constantly learn, re-educate learn from uh, our friends about how can we uh, approach the new public health problems that we face in, in a more innovative and, uh, and creative way. And that's why I get, uh, I love coming to APHA's meeting. Wonderful. Dr. Sue, thank you so much for sharing with us. Really You're welcome. It. Thank you.